You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. This is perhaps one of Jesus' most famous teachings from Matthew 5 verse 38. And the phrase, turn the other cheek and go the extra mile, have entered into our popular vocabulary. People are aware of them, even if perhaps they don't understand them. It's a very countercultural and radical teaching, but often misunderstood. Frederick Nietzsche, the one who famously said God is dead, argued that this teaching rendered Christians as doormats, weak and ineffectual and weak-chinned, unable to make a difference or an impact on the world. But actually Jesus wasn't teaching here that we should just be passive. He was telling us that we need to be proactive in the midst of suffering at the hands of other human beings. You see, the world tells us that there's only two options. If somebody wrongs you, you either get active in being violent back, but you only become what you fight, or you just fall over and lie down and die by becoming passive. And Jesus is not really countenancing either of those. He's saying, find the third way. Be active in your passivity. Become proactive in the midst of, midst of your suffering. You know, if they force you to go one mile, go another mile. You respond to evil with good. Respond to hatred with love. Don't fight fire with fire. Neither just lie down and get burnt. But take that fire and somehow make it into a lamp that shines the truth of love and light on the behaviour of the other person. You see, if someone's fighting you and you don't fight back, they can't carry on telling themselves that you're a bad person, evil, and they're right. They're forced to see the reflection of their own ugliness. And it becomes untenable in the long run to own that about yourself. It's a way that causes transformation, that, it, that enforces, as it were, a truthful response. And this is what's been so powerful in those who have taken this teaching and run with it, such as Martin Luther King Jr., famous example in the civil rights movement in America. He carried the cost for the, this teaching. He lost his life. But his life came to be symbolic and powerful because of that, in a way that echoed the life of Jesus himself, who chose the cross. This week, perhaps you could think of Maybe somebody who has wronged you, or snubbed you, or made you feel small, or stood in your way, and think, how can I respond? Brainstorm creative ways of responding in love and shining a light.